Carl Sandberg, Chicago. Hog butcher for the world, tool maker, stacker of wheat, player with railroads and the nation's freight handler, stormy, husky, brawling, city of the big shoulders. They tell me you are wicked, and I believe them, for I have seen your painted women under the gas lamps, luring the farm boys, and they tell me you are crooked, and I answer, yes, it is true, I have seen the gunmen kill and go free to kill again. And they tell me you are brutal, and my reply is, on the faces of women and children, I have seen the marks of wanton hunger. And having answered so, I turn once more to those who sneer at this my city, and I give them back the sneer, and say to them, Come and show me another city, with lifted head singing so proud to be alive, and coarse and strong and cunning, flinging magnetic curses amid the toil of piling job on job, here is a tall, bold slugger set vivid against the little soft cities. Fierce as a dog with tongue lapping for action, cunning as a savage pitted against the wilderness, bareheaded, shoveling, wrecking, planning, building, breaking, rebuilding, under the smoke, dust all over his mouth, laughing with white teeth under the terrible burden of destiny, laughing as a young man laughs, laughing even as an ignorant fighter laughs who has never lost a battle, bragging and laughing that under his wrist is the pulse and under his ribs the heart of the people, laughing, laughing, the stormy, husky, brawling laughter of youth, half-naked, sweating, proud to be hog-butcher, Toolmaker, stacker of wheat, player with railroads and freight handler to the nation. Cool Tombs When Abraham Lincoln was shoveled into the tombs, he forgot the copperheads and the assassin in the dust, in the cool tombs. And Ulysses Grant lost all thought of conmen and Wall Street, cash and collateral turned ashes in the dust, in the cool tombs. Pocahontas' body, lovely as a poplar, sweet as a red whore in November, or a pawpaw in May. Did she wonder, does she remember, in the dust, in the cool tombs? Take any street full of people burying clothes and groceries, cheering a hero or throwing confetti and blowing tin horns. Tell me if the lovers are losers, Tell me if they get any more than the lovers in the dust, in the cool tombs. Grass. Pile the bodies high at Austerlitz and Waterloo. Shovel them under and let me work. I am the grass. I cover all. And pile them high in Gettysburg and pile them high at Ypres and Verdun. Shovel them under and let me work two years, ten years. And passengers ask the conductor, what place is this? Where are we now? I am the grass. Let me work. They all want to play Hamlet. They all want to play Hamlet. They have not exactly seen their fathers killed, nor their mothers in a frame-up to kill, nor an Ophelia dying with a dust gagging the heart, not exactly the spinning circles of singing golden spiders, not exactly this they have got at not the meaning of flowers, oh flowers, flowers slung by a dancing girl in the saddest play the inkfish Shakespeare ever wrote. Yet they all want to play Hamlet, because it is sad like all actors are sad, and to stand by an open grave with a joker's skull in the hand, and then to say over slow 
and say over slow, wise, keen, beautiful words, masking a heart that's breaking, breaking. There is something that calls and calls to their blood. They are acting when they talk about it, and they know it is acting to be particular about, and yet they all want to play Hamlet. Aprons of Silence Many things I might have said today, and I kept my mouth shut. So many times I was asked to come and say the same things everybody was saying. No end to the yes, 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 me too, me too. The aprons of silence covered me. A wire and hatch held my tongue. I spit nails into an abyss and listened. I shut off the gabble of Jones, Johnson, Smith. All whose names take pages in the city directory. I fixed up a padded cell and lugged it around. I locked myself in and nobody knew it. Only the keeper and the kept in the hoose gore knew it. On the streets, in the post office, on the cars, into the railroad station, where the caller was calling, all aboard, all aboard, for blah, 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 on all points northwest, all aboard. Here I took along my own hoose gore and did business with my own thoughts. Do you see, it must be the aprons of silence. From The People, Yes, section 107. The people will live on. The learning and blundering people will live on. They will be tricked and sold and again sold and go back to the nourishing earth for root holds. The people so peculiar in renewal and comeback. You can't laugh off their capacity to take it. The mammoth rests between his cyclonic dramas. The people, so often sleepy, weary, enigmatic, in a vast huddle, with many units saying, I earn my living, I make enough to get by, and it takes all my time. If I had more time, I could do more for myself, and maybe for others I could read and study, and talk things over, and find out about things. It takes time. I wish I had the time. The people is a tragic and comic two-face, hero and hoodlum, phantom and gorilla twisting to moan with a gargoyle mouth. They buy me and sell me. It's a game. Sometime I'll break loose. Once having marched over the margins of animal necessity, over the grim line of sheer subsistence, then man came to the deeper rituals of his bones, to the lights lighter than any bones, to the time for thinking things over, to the dance, the song, the story, or the hours given over to dreaming, once having so marched, between the finite limitations of the five senses and the endless yearnings of man for the beyond, the people hold to the humdrum bidding of work and food, while reaching out when it comes their way, for lights beyond the prisms of the five senses, for keepsakes lasting beyond any hunger or death. This reaching is alive. The pandas and liars have violated and smutted it. Yet this reaching is alive yet for lights and keepsakes. The people know the salt of the sea and the strength of the wind lashing the corners of the earth. The people take the earth as a tomb of rest and a cradle of hope. Who else speaks for the family of man? They are in tune and step with constellations of universal law. The people is a polychrome, a spectrum and a prism held in a moving monolith, a console organ of changing themes, a clavilux of colour poems wherein the sea offers fog and the fog moves off in rain and the Labrador sunset shortens to a nocturne of clear stars serene over the shot spray of northern lights. The steel mill sky is alive, the fire breaks white and zigzag. Shot on a gunmetal gloaming, man is a long time coming, man will yet win, brother may yet line up with brother. The old anvil laughs at many broken hammers, 
There are men who can't be bought. The fireborn are at home in fire. The stars make no noise. You can't hinder the wind from blowing. Time is a great teacher who can live without hope. In the darkness with a great bundle of grief the people march in the night. And overhead a shovel of stars for keeps the people march. Where to? What next? Sandberg is largely known only for his poem Chicago. But even in this very brief selection taken from the New Oxford Book of American Verse, I think there is a much greater versatility a passion, and most of all, a very well thought through philosophy of life. It is this philosophy of life that in our secular age is so derided, and this perhaps is one of the reasons why the poetry of our age is so bereft of passion, so bereft of feeling, and so bereft of actual thinking. Poetry has become a kind of commonplace, Something a million people in the UK say they write, but I wonder how many of these so-called poets will actually last through the decades, which at the end of the day is the only true test of great poetry. <laughs>